Welcome to Books for Success. Today, we're unraveling the insights from Never Binge Again by Glenn Livingstone. There are thousands of nutritional and diet guides available on the internet. But here, Glenn Livingstone, PhD, who battled with obesity and won, takes you through a more refined way to fight food addiction. In this bite-sized read, you will learn to think thin, draw up a personal food plan, and say no to those impulses that have caged you into believing that you are weak regarding food. A lot of people dread the work it'll take to get from obese to fit and healthy, so they've deemed it impossible. This isn't true, it is very possible to shed all that unhealthy weight and be active and bursting with vitality again. If you follow the carefully laid out steps in this summary, your journey to perfect health will be fruitful. If you like our content hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications. Don't be shy to smash that like button if you discover something valuable. Let's grow and succeed together. Let's start. It is easy to slip into food addiction if you do not have a strict, healthy eating habit. A lot of adults struggle with food addiction and are, as a result, obese. This is an unfortunate outcome and, frankly, an undesirable one for any individual. Obesity is an unhealthy condition set off by overeating and a sedentary lifestyle. Once you lose control of your eating habits, the next step is down a slippery slope of addiction. Most people often think it's easy to lose weight. They weren't always obese. So of course, it should be easy to get back there. But the sad news is it's pretty difficult to climb back up once you've fallen into the trap of food addiction. Like any form of addiction, food addiction forces you to consume excessive amounts of food until you fill the void of cravings. It doesn't matter if you just ate, you eat repeatedly until you cannot move. Here's where it gets tricky. Your mind starts playing games with you. It is resolute and convinces you there, s no way out, and the best thing is to accept this fate. But you must not give in. Your health is more important, and you must reclaim it. There are a ton of quick fixes and self-help guides out there that claim to help people with food addiction and obesity. But most of these never really help. All they do is frustrate and discourage people desperate for change, leading to yet another downward spiral. But this summary is different. The principles and tactics you will learn here were obtained from experiments and tested on thousands of individuals. In the following chapters, we shall discuss the everyday harmful eating habits, how to combat them, and how to get back to peak fitness. Do not commit to any quick fixes or hasty solutions. They're only trying to con you out of your cash. Glenn Livingstone, PhD is far from your ordinary hack, he's a trained professional, and his methods are backed up with extensive research to ensure you get the best out of the experience. Creating a food plan that will help you stop binging. Binging on food is one of the toughest addictions to fight. Unlike drugs and alcohol, you cannot avoid eating. There arises a problem of gauging what to eat, where to eat, and how to eat. This problem takes the victim on a roller coaster that very few can escape. Many find sticking to diets and food plans a tad difficult. And the standard formulas available today are proving too static to cater to a wide array of binging cases. One reason we cannot stick to diet plans is because of our inner pig. The pig represents your fat thinking self. It hijacks your survival drive toward food behaviors that do not serve your best interests. It's an out of control eating machine that will destroy everything if you love it. It sabotages your plans and exists only to satiate itself. The pig is not you. You have all it takes to control it. You can cage it and chase the diet plan that works for you. For this to work, you have to take 100% responsibility for setting up your food plan. It is okay to consult a nutritionist, but choose what works for you. In addition, your food plan should exude clarity. You could write it down and pin it to a wall to realize when you are off track. And when you start, you should also identify the squeals of the pig that is, the voice that will try to obstruct your progress. To shut it out, you could set up rules to guide you through this process. First, define eating habits, or habits in general, that you should never again indulge. For instance, you could pick a specific food or category you must drop. Second, define habits or things you will always do, such as eating more vegetables, drinking more water, or working out. Next, choose eating habits that your dietary plan does not restrict. Label these foods as unrestricted. Lastly, categorize some food under conditional and define the exceptions that could permit you to take them. For example, 
you could decide to only take soda after you have finished a workout session. Discomfort is normal as you comply with your food plan. It is typical to feel discomfort when walking down this road. You are in constant war with the pig in you, and it will remind you of all the pleasure you get from eating junk. It will tell you that your decision to abstain from a category of food is slowly killing you. It will tell you that you are in discomfort, a lot of it. You will feel like a part of you is slowly slipping away. Also, you will have a face-off with your cravings. And judging by how our society favors unhealthy diets and food, you will undoubtedly feel overwhelmed by your decisions. You will agree that there is no respite for those who have dedicated themselves to eating right. However, there is a way you can win, regardless of the mounting pressure to fail. You should not forget your food plan and all your nevers, always, unrestricted, and conditionals. Remember that all those things telling you to give up and go back to your old ways are the pig. Always remind yourself of the promise you made never to binge again or to never indulge in eating unhealthy food. Nevertheless, if you lose your way and binge, you have to learn how to get back on track, or else you give up. To find a way to stay ahead of your fears, guilt, regrets, and failures, you must rely on progress rather than perfection. There are many reasons you shouldn't pursue perfection. One of them is that your pig could capitalize on your perfectionism strategy when you fall. It will tell you that you are flawed and weak and that you cannot do right by yourself or keep your word. As such, you must set up a framework to counter the barrages on your confidence and your will to continue. To pick yourself up, you should identify the factors that caused you to binge. After that, re-examine your food plan and ascertain which one of your conditionals is the root cause. Move that conditional to the never category. Most importantly, realize that regression should not tarnish your commitment to the never binge again practice. You should know when to evolve your food plan and when not to. Change is universal, and there are times when your food plan will also experience differences. This modification may result from new research that has opened your eyes to some flaws in your current dietary program. All in all, be open to changes. Nonetheless, do not mistake your instinct to improve your food plan as an excuse to give in to the pig tendencies. Furthermore, Glenn Livingstone, PhD opinionated that he does not believe in the numbering system that addicts use to label their successes. For instance, some people record the days they abstained from their vices. This notion suggests that they cannot live an everyday life as they constantly remind themselves that they are in a continuous battle with impulses to eat uncontrollably. In contrast, he advised that you strip your pig of any form of recognition and power that would allow it to rear its head whenever you make mistakes. Parallel to this strategy, you should learn to understand the role of deprivation and the value it is adding to your life. What is your abstinence from unhealthy eating availing you? This question will help you commit to your food plan. It becomes difficult to stick to your plan when the food industry is busy trying to sell you unhealthy food repackaged as nutritious and healthy. You ought to see this through the fancy packaging and discover the truth behind the garbage in light of this. Take full responsibility for your food plan, own it, and avoid looking for validation from others. Also, you could keep this, never binge again, philosophy to yourself, as many people in similar situations are yet to fight their way out of the illusion that they need help. And so, they naturally attack you since you remind them that breaking free is possible. You have the power to control what you eat. It is a common belief that addiction is a disease in itself, and the afflicted cannot entirely fight off its influence. Therefore, this false concept assures the victims that they are powerless and that the best they can do is live the entirety of their lives nursing this mysterious disease. People get brainwashed into believing that it is normal to experience relapses, for it is impossible to become whole again. What this mentality or this belief does, in essence, is cripple the mind of people battling food addiction. They tend to become powerless and have something to blame when they relapse. At the same time, a mentality born out of a sense of responsibility does the exact opposite. When you take responsibility for your present state and believe it is in your power to do better, it becomes easier to change your situation. While you are at it, you should consider the common mistakes that often get people back to their starting point. For instance, you might get tempted to take a little break from your diet because you already see some positives. You could also decide to indulge in your never food category since you can quickly burn the calories in your next workout session. Likewise, it is common for people to indulge in an unhealthy lifestyle while masking their failure at self-love. 
Regardless of how you could get derailed, you must stick to the task at hand. It would be best if you stayed true to your commitment and promised to eat right. Always remember that the penance for your failure is way more than the temporal pleasure that junk food gives you. Bearing this in mind, you must rely on discipline as it is the only way you can access true freedom. Did you know? Chocolate was once used as a currency in ancient South America. Beware of guilt and shame as you fight the temptations of binging. Guilt and shame are indicators or emotional distortions that remind us that we have done something terrible. These two distortions come into play when adopting the Never Binge Again program. When you falter, they remind you of your mistake and make you realize you have gone astray. Do not feed off guilt and shame by beating yourself up till you start to doubt your capacity to stay committed. Instead, acknowledge your guilt and shame, learn from your mistakes, and propose solutions to help you become immune to such temptations. In hindsight, past failures make you stronger, especially if you learn to channel the emotions they dissipate. In addition, stay awake mentally, as it is common for people to blame unconscious binging as the reason they are relapsing. Honestly, this assertion is false because we tend to ignore our present reality when what we do goes against the principles we are trying to live by. Here, Dr. Livingstone advised that you should get a journal and write down all the various ways the pig has wanted to get you to fail. This strategy will help you recognize these trappings in the future and teach your body to become immune to them. However, when you have practiced and done all these well-defined strategies, and yet you are still struggling with binging, what's next? At this point, you must rely on your free will to eat healthy again and again until it sticks. Note that free will is the concept that motivates us to choose our destiny. It continues to remind us that there are consequences. So, when you find yourself at a crossroads, hold on to your right to choose to be healthy and wield it until your addiction fades away. Conclusion a larger population of people than we care to admit struggle with food addiction. This addiction leads to a host of harmful health conditions and, ultimately, even death. Food addiction doesn't happen overnight. It is often a result of the difficulty in managing just how much food we are supposed to consume. Dealing with food addiction requires a lot of willpower and support from our loved ones. Once we start on the journey to be free of food binging, it is essential to do it with slow and careful steps to avoid rushing your body and forcing it into a relapse. A healthy support system's role is undeniably instrumental in learning and maintaining a new habit. Regardless of how prepared you are to stick to your diet, you should note that different entities will seek to taint your commitment. Your success in this quest relies on your capacity to tame your mind, learn from mistakes, and persist in improving. The goal is to eat and ultimately live healthier, and as such, this goal must get engraved in your mind so it becomes the driving force for you whenever you feel like quitting. You must focus on making progress no matter how little it may appear to be. There is no rush as long as you are committed and diligent in your journey. If you feel like quitting, consider taking a break, but only a short break so you don't fall back into harmful habits again. Try this. Develop a food plan that you know will get you the body you want. During development, permanently remove junk food from your diet, and add nutritious and carbs-free meals. Also, you should introduce your body to this new lifestyle slowly and carefully at a comfortable pace. Thank you for joining us on this enlightening journey. If you've enjoyed our summary, consider reading the full book for a more in-depth exploration. Before you go, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't yet, and share this video with someone who could benefit from these insights. Until next time, Keep reading, keep learning, and keep growing.